Mary Wesleyan. Uh, have a seat. Uh, whew. Hey, who's this guy? He hasn't been here in a couple weeks. What's been going on? Uh, for all of us, welcome today. I'm Pastor Andrew. I'm pastor here at Mary Wesleyan Church, and I am humbled and honored that the last few weeks... We had, a, we had a time away with my wife and I, which was wonderful. We had a pastor's spouse retreat, and people here brought the word, prayed, sang, and then we got sick. Uh, and so we were out one more week, and I'm just humbled that so many people stepped up in many ways to help out, um, c come here on Sunday, and, and have God show up. It's just a wonderful time to be here together as a church family, and that's the fam. Uh, so the family of God doing the things of God and the house of God, and that's just a wonderful thing. So, uh, As we start off our service today, I'm going to be reading from Psalms. I have Psalms 96. Psalm 96 says this. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day. After day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all gods to all nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Amen. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and glory are his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in his splendor. All of his holiness tremble before him, all of the earth. Say among all nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established and cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. The seas resound. All that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and his peoples in his faithfulness. That's what we're here to do today. We're here to rejoice in God, to sing, to be jubilant, to, to understand God's impact and work in your lives and how he's brought you here and he continues to bring you forward in our Christian journey as disciples. Does anyone else have anything else to share? A, a scripture or something that's spoken to them this week that they wanted to get, uh, give glory to God? All right. So as we go forward here with our announcements, the women's breakfast, <coughs> sorry, next week um, here after the service is our board meeting. So make sure board members are uh, coming here next week. And then we're going to do our um, monthly meeting for that. The women's breakfast has changed. It's not this Saturday like normal, the second Saturday, but it's going to be 316 because someone's getting some work done there. Uh, or we're praying for her later on uh, for her surgery, Karen. And so Secret Sister is going to be revealed that day. So um, March 16th, 9 a.m., Secret Sister at Good Galleys. The Family Resource Center Gala, those who want to come, there's a sign-up out there. I think this is the last day I can reserve seats for that. So if you're interested at all in the Family Resource Center Gala, make sure you put that your name down there so I can reserve the number of seats for that. Um, and then we get into Easter. You see these guys out there? These are our Easter events coming up. And so take them. Take a stack of them. We can make more. We can make plenty. Yeah, we have our Palm Sunday uh, giveaway for the Palm Branches. We have the Good Supper, which is on 329. It's going to be on uh, Good Friday. And then we have Easter Sunday service, both sunrise and normal service times for that day. So give these out. Invite people. Be praying actively for people who you know need to know God. Easter is a wonderful, great time to say, hey, my church is having some events. My church is having some stuff going on. Come here. I'll bring you. I'll help you. I'll, I'll get you there. Whatever needs to happen, and have them plug into our church here and our things going on. In addition, it's not in your bulletin, April 13th, these are out there, the Broken Teacup Women's Day. Um, it's a, it's a basically a ladies' um, devotional day or ladies' kind of retreat kind of day. Uh, Karen is helping lead that as well, and we're going to be having that here in April. It's going to come before you know it, because Easter is going to come, whiz on by, and then a couple weeks later, 
We're going to be Women's Day. So reserve your time, save it in your schedule, share these as well to people out there for those things coming on for that broken teacup uh, ladies devotional day. So. Other announcements or things that I'm forgetting? What's that? Oh, yeah. So next week, uh, what, is, what is this thing here? Let me see. Uh. No, I'm not going to the basement. Okay. Whoa. Hi, everyone. Oh, fishing. No, it's not for fishing, Steve. I know you want to, though. He said the walleye is going to be butted this week, but... No, no, down here we have our baptistry, and so anyone who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and has never been baptized, talk with me. We can have you baptized. But my plan is to have a baptism next week. We have a couple people come forward who are willing and uh, saying that they have never been baptized. And so we're going to get this thing full of water. Whew. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's like I'm in the basement. I don't know. And it'll be, hopefully it'll be warm, yeah. And uh, those who want to know more about baptism, want to make that decision to declare publicly their salvation, and want to be baptized, we'll be using that this upcoming week as well. So, We also have a guest here today. We have Pastor Matt Pickering, who is our district superintendent. Oh. He is my boss, so you got to tell him all the bad things about me, I'm sure. So, uh, no, he sees over 80 churches here in the Penn York District of the Wesleyan Church, and he came because he knew I had COVID and wanted to offer his support to me and our church uh, during that time of, of that. So I told him I'm back, and I got some energy, so we'll see how it goes today. It'll be good. So he'll, he'll pick me if I fall. Tr trust falls. Isn't that what Bob preached about last week? I, I, can, just, I can just fall, and Matt can catch me. It'll be, it'll be great. So, uh, other announcements or things that I forgot to mention today? Well, let's pray and we'll get our worship started uh, here as well. So let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we come to you in your house as your people offering what we have to you. Offering our praise, offering our worship, offering our lives in service and dedication. Offering it all. Because, Lord, you paid it all for us. You gave it all for us. You cared for us first and loved us first. Lord, no matter what trial, temptation, or struggle that we're going through, Lord, we know that you are there. You could show up and make our path straight. So help straighten us up, clean us up, fill us with your spirit today, God. And lead us, continue, down, lead us and continue down the righteous path that you have for us. Help us to sing a new song in this new day to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us in worship. Praise the hallelujah.
search much deeper Amen. 
accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior, you're welcome to accept communion today. With the bread, we take it individually because it symbolizes our individual coming to Christ. And with the juice, we hold that. It is grape juice. We hold that um, to symbolize our, and drink that together to symbolize our unity and that we are a church unified with Christ. Thank you, Matthew. Good morning. Good morning. It's an honor for me to be here. It's an honor for me to lead in the celebration of the Lord's Supper. Pastor Andrew mentioned in his prayer the possibility of healing through Jesus Christ. And the Lord's Supper is a tangible way for us to be reminded of that kind of healing and how it became possible. And it became possible through Jesus' death and resurrection. Through his death and resurrection, he defeated the power of sin and death. So we can experience healing far beyond any physical healing possible. We can experience spiritual healing, which enables us to have a right relationship or a restored relationship with our Heavenly Father. So as you take the bread today and as you drink the juice, be reminded of the extent to which your Heavenly Father went to make this healing possible for us. John chapter 22, starting with verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love, your mercy, and your grace. You are a just God. Yeah, you are a loving and forgiving and gracious God. And we see that so powerfully demonstrated in this meal that your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, instituted with his disciples at that Last Supper and one that he uh, encouraged the church to continue uh, in. As we read through the New Testament, we see the practice of pausing regularly and intentionally to celebrate your death and resurrection. 
So we thank you today for the privilege of taking this juice and this bread, being reminded of your death. We know that this uh, ceremony, this service is more than just symbolic. Certainly the bread and the juice represent your body and blood, but we know that you are present here with us in this meal in powerful ways. We've spoken of the healing power of your salvation, and we would pray that by your grace and the ministry of your Holy Spirit, you would do a con and continue your healing work in us as we remember uh, through the partaking of these elements. Would you consecrate them and pour out your grace upon us in these moments? And it's in your powerful name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We have the ushers come forward. And as Pastor Andrew said, we'll first distribute the bread. And as you receive it, you may take it and sit in a reflection uh, and uh, celebration of the significance of Christ's willingness that his body be broken and that he die and take our place upon the cross. distribute the juice and again if you would hold on to that we will take the juice together uh, 
demonstrating our unity in the body of Christ and celebrating the fact of Christ's shed blood and its ability to forgive our sins. standards, anything red like blood or like juice like this poured on something white or of lighter color will stain, right? Mm -hmm. But according to God's economy, red washes white. Amen. God was talking to the people of God in the, through the prophet Isaiah when he said, come now let us reason together. Though your sin be red as crimson, it could be washed white as snow. We know that God was foretelling ultimately what he would accomplish through his son Jesus, that through his shed blood, though our sin be red as crimson, it could be washed white as snow. So as you drink this juice, you are celebrating the fact that through Jesus Christ, God has forgiven and removed the penalty of sin from you and from me. And thanks be to God for such a wonderful gift. Take it and drink and do so with great thanksgiving.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the privilege of this very tangible reminder of your great love. Continue to work your salvation out in us, that others may see your power, and we might have the privilege of testifying to salvation in your name and to see many others in this community and region come to know you as Lord and Savior. And we pray this in your name. It's a special time of communion. We're going to dismiss our children down for our children's program today. So if you're a parent or grandparent, make sure you have um, your pager. Your children are welcome to head down ages 3 to 11. So as we're talking today, one of the um, prayers um, and praises that I have is that I'm here. Um, as I said last, uh, said at the beginning of the service, I was sick this last week. My, my wife, my son, and I, we all... Uh, handle uh, that kind of sickness a little differently. Um, Daniel was sick one day and then bouncing off the walls, and then we were sick of him after what? No, I was kidding. Uh, but we had uh, fevers and trouble breathing and things like that, and so we appreciated that time of rest and recuperation. Um, and it was, uh, I, I know some people called, and some, I know many people were praying, uh, and so I thank you for that. Um, any other prayers or praises this last week? Or we, yes, Mike. I would, I would praise and ask God, God to help me, to guide me, and to help me get rid of my uh, camper and Charlie get stolen from Connor um, around the search of a vehicle. Right. So praise God. Praise. Sold the camper. Amen. 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 Oh. We got to double down on prayer of the wisdom of what to use that money for, right? Exactly. That's, that's what we got to do. So. <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah, Sherry. We've been praying for my cousin, Tommy Williams. He's been in the Amen. Praise God. So, so we'll continue to pray for Donna and her recovery and her learning to walk and getting out of the, you know, getting out of that desperate time when she was in a coma. And we'll give her give God all the praise for that. All their prayers, praises. Carly? So we'll pray for you with your blood pressure and issues there, whether the medicine will work or God will heal you. And, you know, God has done greater things, we know, so, so he'll help out with those things. Uh, one prayer request that was brought to me before the service today, I don't know if those who know, uh, Joy White um, is in the hospital at this time and was taken off of life support. Um, and so uh, Joy is daughter-in-law to um, Ray and Gloria, and so we're praying for her as well. Um, and the family there, um, dialysis has stopped, and so they're unsure how much longer she has for them. And so we're praying for the family, we're praying for joy, uh, we're praying for those things as well today. So. Someone over here? Is it you, Karen? Yeah, I'll um, pray for, for my surgery Thursday. Okay. Okay. You, you I'm not sure what time, they, had, they set out the first one, so. Okay. Yeah, <coughs> Thursday. Do you want to come forward and have us pray for you? Okay, come, come on up, come on up. <laughs> you gotta face that way. Oh, I do? That's the scary thing. Yeah, that's the scary thing. I always want to put your hands on Karen for her surgery coming up.
God, as we lay hands on Karen today, we know that you have her in the palm of your hand. You have this uh, surgery taken care of. Lord, we pray that you be with the surgeon's hands, the medicine, and the doctors as she goes through this time of surgery. And we ask and pray for a swift and speedy recovery that her mind and would be clear. She'd be able to focus and there'd be little to no, if not none at all, pain. That you'd help her through this time of recovery, of not being able to use her hands, which would be frustrating, God. And we just ask you to help her turn this into praise, turn this into your glory, into your um, your time for her, whether this is a needed rest for her of time uh, to step aside, to reorient, to re-understand um, herself and things, um, whether you're giving her time for other things. God, let's pray whatever this uh, plan for her that you have for her, that you reveal these things in, this, in these moments, in this next month, as she's continuing to recover from the surgery. Bless her and help her, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Anyone else want to come up for prayer? Do you, does anyone want to stand in and represent someone for prayer? No? Okay. Yes, Mike. I just wanted to say, um, I had a CAT scan done of my stomach and everything. They said it's in place. It's the inflammation and everything. So they can get that taken care of with the sonogram coming up sometime soon. Okay. So we'll pray for your stomach then. Excellent. We'll pray for that and any of the tests and things like that. Going on, we'll pray that there is no cats in there either. So, because it was a cat's game. All right, Mike. You know a first name? Uh, Josh. 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 Zach. 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 So we'll pray for Zach, um, who encountered a brush with death, and through God's provision has um, hopefully still um, going strong. And so we'll pray for Zach and his family and the people impacted by that. Others? Yeah. Emma. I have praise. Um, a firefighter brother in Delaware had a stroke has been in hospital since September. He had to have dialysis to recover. So they've been treating him, and they told him um, they've got him, I think, on some antibiotics or something, and they told him he will not have to have dialysis again. So the Lord answered all the prayers. Amen. 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 That, is a big, that is a big step to not have to have dialysis. He said he's your brother? And, and the firefighter. He's a brother, he's a brother firefighter. firefighter. Got it. Got it. Okay. I just want to make sure. So, brother firefighter recovering through, through that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Others, praise, praises. Yes, Don. Yeah, I just want to pray because just recently, like two years ago, I was in the, I got hit by a car on a bicycle. So, just recently, my, the pain in my leg is getting more severe, especially on cold days and damp days. And I just want to pray that it, you know, it, it's, of course, it's healing, but God just want to pray now. Just so. We'll definitely pray for your leg and, and the pain there, Mike. Or, sorry, uh, Don. Sorry, Don. <laughs> we'll definitely pray for the pain in the leg and uh, those things, especially with spring coming, you know, because there's going to be some damp days there. So, pray for that. Did you have your hand up, Terry? No? Okay. Anybody else? Prayers, praises? Lori? She found that she had been laying in there on her way 
raised her hand. Her mom is blind and she found her stiffened with her hands held to her chest. And Valerie removed her from there and took her back home and has been caring for her ever since. She is improving. They took her off all medicine except for a water pill and she is now coherent, able to get up and walk. So I'm putting for Valerie's mom and all the things going on and Valerie having to help take care of her through that time. So we definitely pray for those things. Anybody else? Yes, Mike. God is good. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he's here for you, Mike. Did you have one, Sue? Yeah. Um, we're all doing so much better from being sick, but my chest is still really tight. And uh, I think that's enough. <laughs> so we'll pray for Sue and her breathing and her chest and stuff going on there. So. Jane. Yeah, we'll definitely lift those things in prayer. I said daughter, daughter's brother-in-law right. passed away. Daughter in -law's, oh, my son-in-law's brother. Son-in-law's brother. His name was Ernie Camarada. Ernie. There we go. I'll pray for Ernie and his family. And pray for your car. Because, you know, you. you'll, you'll have to get some, need help. You'll have to get some boots or a nice bike if that car can't get fixed. I don't know. We'll figure it out, Gene. It'll be okay. God's got it. Other prayers and praises. All right, I'm going to take these before God. You're welcome at any time in the service, always, to come up before the altar. But in this special time of prayer, I'm going to be praying at the altar. You're welcome to join me or bow your heads or hearts where you are. Lord God Almighty, this is your church, and these are your people. We come before you, opening ourselves and asking to fill our spirits, rejuvenate us, and help us to rejoice in you. Lord, there are, pray there are prayers and praises, uh, answered prayer um, from long-time prayers that have happened, that you've healed people, you've healed the sick, you've healed dialysis, you've healed so many things, God. And so we know that you have these things in your hands. We know that you have, you have it. We got our backs. And Lord, so we come to you open today, asking you to help our lives. Um, Lord, those who are struggling in their, in their life journey, whether it um, be due to pain, whether they've been away for, for a bit of a time, Lord, that you brought them back to this place for a reason, for a special connection that you have that to learn, to grow, and to develop as a disciple of Christ. Lord, we do lift up uh, the White family, we lift up Joy White specifically and Jeremy, her husband, as Joy is um, uh, off of dialysis now, which is not a great thing, and so she is off of life support, which is not a great thing, and, and it's possible days left for her um, 
And so, Lord, we pray in your intervention in this situation that if it be your will, that you would heal her in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would be with all the family members, um, Jeremy, Mary, um, Gloria, Ray, all the people surrounding her and her children and all the people, Lord, and you would build them up, help them through this time. And Lord, if it's your will that she would be with you in eternity, Lord, we pray for those who are left behind, that, um, that you would comfort and care and help them and carry them through this moment. Lord, we pray for um, all those who aren't here due to sickness, due to COVID or flu. I thank you for healing my wife and my son and my, myself here this last week and that we're here to celebrate you and be with you. But Lord, we know that others can be sick out there as well, so we pray that you help them. Uh, we pray for Mike uh, with his stomach issues and that he had a CAT scan going on, and we pray that the doctors would have answers for these inflammations that are going on in his stomach. We praise you that you have showed up in a real way by helping him sell his camper, and Lord, we ask that you give him wisdom and discernment in this situation to be able to use that money wisely for his future um, and give him a hand up, not just the hand out, God. Help him seek the, um, help him seek the healer and the giver um, first, not the healing and giving. Lord, we pray for Carlene and her blood pressure, um, that it's raised up right now, and the doctor's interventions with medicine and healing in this way. If it be your will, Lord, we just, just ask that you heal her completely in the name of Jesus Christ, that her blood pressure would just be under control. Uh, you would help her through those moments in time when it's high, that she would recognize those things and be able to report them to the doctor, um, that you help her doctor figure out what's wrong, diagnose and prescribe. We pray for Karen, specifically this week as she come up, came forward, Lord, but as she's having surgery with her hands and the, the difficulty that she's going to have in that recovery, that long recovery, God, that you keep her um, keep her busy, keep her mind occupied, keep her um, able to do things and still uh, jump for joy for you and that there be no or little pain throughout this recovery period, that you'd also help her to be able to um, do things for your kingdom and for her household. We pray for Zach, as Mike shared the story of Zach overdosing here this last week, um, and that he was miraculously brought back to life by the um, interventions of you, God, and by the EMTs, God. We pray for his recovery wherever he is at, whether he's in a hospital or whatever's going on with him, that he would know that life is precious and life is good, and that this second chance that he has um, is something for him to turn that life around and maybe turn towards you, God. Help him see that, give him a revelation, help him understand the preciousness of these things. God, we pray for our brother firefighter um, who is now off of dialysis. He's down in, in Delaware that you've recovered him and healed him. So we thank you for that, and we ask you to help him still in his ongoing recovery, whatever is going on, that you would heal it in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for our uh, friend here, Don, who's uh, had, had a car accident in the past, and so he has ongoing pain in his leg and different, different limbs there. During the spring, spring season, it's going to be rainy, God, and so we pray that that pain would be eased even during the rainstorms, God, even during the change of temperature, humidity, God, that you would help him manage that well and that he would be able to see God working in the midst of this healing, God, that you would do this in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for um, Lori's boss's mother, who she, who Valerie, who's, who's caring for her mother at this time, um, that uh, she was in these deplorable conditions, deplorable health, God. We thank you that Valerie is intervening we ask that you give Valerie the strength to help her um, be steadfast and be strong through this time. A step by step, you lead her mother into recovery and that you could heal um, this, this person. You could heal her in the name of Jesus Christ and help her not fall into those um, desperate, deplorable times again. Uh, we pray for uh, Michael Carroll as he's uh, been going through a lot these last few months, that you brought him back here and that you continue to help him learn what God has for him in his life. Give him a special purpose and help him see that through this time, God. Thank you for bringing him back. Lord, we pray for Sue and her breathing. Um, she was recently recovering from a sickness there and uh, that she would be able to breathe well and better again, that she would get full use of the capacity of her lungs and you would heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. Then we pray for Ernie 
uh, who uh, had recently passed away in his family. Uh, we just pray for his family. Um, it's another death in, the, in that circle of family recently. So many uh, going on, God, that we pray that they would see you in the midst of these things, that they would consider eternity as an option and um, want to uh, build a relationship with you through, through, this, um, through this situation. Ease their pain, ease their, uh, comfort them through these times, and help them draw close to you, God. And Lord, we do pray for Jane's car and uh, other cars out there that might be having difficulties as well. Uh, it's, it's important for us to be able to get to the places we need to get to in our rural area, God. So I pray for Jane and that the mechanic would find the answer for her car and any other people out there struggling with their cars, that you would help them in this time. We ask you all of these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, a long, long time ago, I was preaching a sermon series called Lessons from the Rabbi. <sighs> it's been a few weeks. And I illustrated how Jesus himself was a master and teacher how he took disciples underneath him and was teaching them in different ways that had never been explored before. As we talked about, this is a, a Jewish prayer shawl. Yeah, it feels right. That's good. Uh, no, it's not a new fashion trend. It's okay. You know, we all have to get Jewish prayer. And we're not turning Jewish here, but just to think about Jesus as teacher and master having been trained and was fully Jewish and, and, and learning how to implement these lessons to this new wave of Christianity is amazing to me. Because he broke the paradigm. He broke the, the normal way of teaching. And he still does that today in his church now. I'm going to ask this question. It's going to be a hard question. I'm sorry. Have you ever been stretched spiritually? Oh, I don't want to be stretched. I'll tell you, physically, there's an example I have. Um, back in high school, we would do two-a-day practices for football. I'm telling you, that was stretching. Oh, we would just do a full day's practice in the morning, then we'd do a full day's practice in the afternoon, and by the end of the day, we were, oh, we were not very good at all. And that was being stretched physically. It was training. It was training our bodies for the task ahead, for football, for the plays and the things that we needed to do. And what Jesus does with his disciples, both back in the Bible times and now, is he stretches us. He trains us. He equips us to be able to do his works, to be his hand and feet to, in, in this region, in, in, in this time of his people. Well, how do you do that? I'll show you here. We got these. these he would... Give me the, yeah. So Jesus was a teacher. His disciples were all called differently, but we're called to the same master as we are now. We are called to, to, to be with God and honor Jesus. He taught through example, story, practical helps, and some explanation, those uh, parables, you know. And it was different, different than tradition, yet rooted in tradition. Jesus did not take a bunch of desks and put them out in the middle of a field and have his disciples learn from the textbook of how to be a wonderful Christian. This is not how Jesus teaches and, and preached his life. It was through practical application. The stretching of the disciples was not just head, head knowledge. It was how do I apply the lessons of the Bible, the lessons of the things that Jesus is teaching me in the actual, in the practical. And so I'm going to give you an example today. It's a parable, and it seems very much teaching, like they were sitting down at desk and saying, oh, let's all listen to the lesson today. What's the moral of the story? No, this is, lives are at stake in this parable. And so let's look at our parable from Matthew chapter 13. It might be one familiar to you, but we're going to take a, do our best to go a little deep with it today. So Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 23. The same day... Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got in a boat and sat in it. And while the people stood on the shore, 
he told them many things in parables. Here's one of them. A farmer went out to sow his seed. He, as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell along rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seeds fell along good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And like good disciples, this is what the disciples said. Why do you speak to the people in parables? It's a great question. Because as a traditional Jew taught in synagogue or taught in the, in, in, in the teachings of the time, it's all literal tradition, uh, physical examples um, of, of things we're supposed to do. So, so you're saying we're supposed to go out and get some seeds? We're supposed to scatter them? That seems kind of wasteful, Jesus. I don't understand what's going on. You know, why do you speak in parables? And as we've learned through um, teaching here, um, sometimes those physical example parable lessons are a deeper, deeper spiritual lesson for us. But I can imagine his disciples asking a question like this beforehand. And in, in Mark's gospel, because the parable of sower is in three of the gospels, in Mark's gospel, before um, he teaches the parable of sower, there's actually some people who are... Um, I would say not accepting of Jesus Christ, the people who are questioning Jesus and his teachings, the Pharisees and different things like that. But as a disciple following Jesus Christ, as I have dedicated my life to Jesus, I would think the disciples at some point ask this question as we ask it today. My faith is so strong. And when I say Jesus is the answer to someone's life or this is the answer to someone's life, sometimes they don't believe me or they don't follow Jesus. We're following you. Why doesn't everyone see the wonderful works and miracles that you're doing, Jesus, and just follow you? Why don't they just change their life around and do it? Well, it's the answer here. Sometimes the, the, the seed goes to different places, and when that, when that message is, is gone out, it goes to different ways. And so Jesus, in teaching this parable, I think he's going through some of this to say that when we are a disciple, when we actually start to decide to follow Jesus Christ, we grow. We witness. We have to hold on to our faith. We pray. We use our spiritual gifts in action, in the practical, and we need to do that stuff. And I believe that's part of the mystery of this parable, that we have to practically work through some of those things are of our faith. We need to step up in different ways. And so Jesus answers them in this way. We've got, we got the scripture. We can keep going through 23. So he replied, this is Jesus, because the knowledge and the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Through seeing, they do not see. Through hearing, they do not hear or understand. It is then them fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this, the people's hearts have become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts in turn, and I would heal them. But blessed be your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people have longed to see what you see, but did not see, and hear what you hear, but did not hear. And so Jesus answers this question. Why doesn't everyone take up this light and let my Holy Spirit light shine through me? Well, some of them aren't, aren't, aren't able to hear. They aren't, aren't able to see. Now that could be circumstance, culture, 
the messages and the things that's been layered through them out throughout time. I don't think God intentionally is trying to prevent anyone from seeing, but some people in their own free will, they just can't. They can't get there. And to me, it, it saddens me. It, in my empathetic, compassionate heart, I want all souls to be saved. Amen? They want everyone to know the saving grace of Christ. But it just doesn't happen that way in the practical. And so this is one example where Jesus starts to go through and actually, as a teacher, as a giving his lesson, explains the reason for the parable. He doesn't always do that, but here's one. He says, listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown into their heart. And this seed is sown along the path. The seed that's falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word at once and receives it with joy. But since they have no root, it only lasts for a short time. And when trouble, persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling around the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and deceitfulness of wealth or other things choke the word making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. And so, as a disciple, as the disciples are listening to this and learning this lesson, not just as a mental exercise, but in the practical of how am I supposed to live my life and how am I supposed to follow you, Jesus? Jesus has sent them on missions. He's had to send them into towns to knock on people's doors and say, Jesus Christ is here. He's coming. He's going to preach. Come hear him. He's the most awesome thing since sliced bread. I don't even know if sliced bread had been then yet. But anyway, he's, he's, he's the best. Come hear him. Understand him. Invite him into your heart. Be saved. And I'm sure the disciples are saying, why do only some come? Why do only some follow? Why do only some receive? What's going on here? And so it might be a lesson to us. I don't know if there's some people here that have these kind of struggles inside of themselves or if they know someone. With our first example, I, I would say it's, it might be hesitation. This is the, the people who are on the path that the, the birds scoop up quick, you know? Uh, so, so we gotta quickly find our, find our way to plant ourselves and get there uh, and get our, get our roots going. Or, or it might be they just kinda, they, 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 it's not, not the right timing, I don't know. It's some, something where quickly they're taken away. Roots, oh, this is the biggest thing. I, I really like people having roots. <sighs> roots and people not going deep enough. A, sur a surface level Christian who believes that just doing some of the basics will get them there and not developing an actual personal relationship with Jesus who, who will get you through it all. Who that I rely on his strength first, that I trust in him and have sacrificed or have followed in some deeply rooted way. In the, in the theology and the message that I know is truth. So I, I step through and I follow with him. These, these people on the, on the rocky soil, they don't do that. They just stay there and say, hey, I'm growing, so it must be it's okay, right? And then temptation, struggle comes and uh, trials come. And the sun comes out and scorches them. Or the, last, the third one is worries, right? It says, it's what it said in the verse. So there's people that are planted near the thorns and all these other, I don't know if anyone's a gardener in here, but all these other weeds and thorns grow up around the, the fruit, fruited plant that you want to have. And if you don't have a master gardener come in there and pluck out those weeds or, or wipe away those thorns, we, the, they start to be more worried about the thorns they start to be more worried about themselves and their own selfish desires. They start to be more worried about the things than about following God. And so their focus, their priorities get, get a little off and they get choked out by trying to do so much, sometimes of good things, 
but not necessarily the right things and the righteous things. And it's hard. And so, where have you been planted? Well, you're here at Mallory Wesleyan Church. I'm glad you're here. And this can be a fruitful place for you. It can be a place to be able to serve, grow, and live in Jesus Christ. Because we preach the Bible here. I, I, I forgot to mention this at the start. We put our new Read Through the Bible reading out there in the back of the church there uh, for the next two months. I pre appreciate Pastor Greg for putting that out for us. But we're trying to read through the Bible in a year again with our, with our verses there. We're trying to be in fellowship with each other. We're trying to build each other up. But one thing I think that we could do as a church, and something I think would really help us, is just personally connecting with each other a little bit more. If, if you were to say, as a disciple, um, and we look at the example of these disciples and they're practical, they're out there sharing as well as learning. They're out there teaching and saying, listen to the, my master Jesus, as well as following and bringing that information in their, in their mind. And so I, I talked to a couple, this, a couple guys this week. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gather a couple of our newer single guys and I'm just going to get them together and we're going to read some Bible. It'll be great. I'm going to get a day and find a time and every week we'll just kind of meet and we'll just read the Bible and see what, see what God says. What do you think? You think that would change the world? How, how, how often do we do that? Well, it would change those people, right? So if everyone in our church did that, where, where you said, you know what, I want to invest in a, in a younger Christian, or I want to invest in someone who might know the faith differently than me, if you walk, off, walk up alongside them and say, you know what, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I should do what that pastor said. We should, we should meet and maybe read the Bible. What do you think? Can we meet Tuesdays at, at 3 and make a time and make a date and just meet and start and see what comes of it? Because if you're not washing your mind in the word, if you're not renewing yourself in some way and, and connecting that on the practical, you're missing out a lot on the discipleship of Jesus Christ. The discipleship with Jesus Christ. And so I asked Carlene to share an example for me. Because Carlene told me a couple weeks ago something she had been doing. You want to share? Sure. Okay. You want the mic? Sure. All right. Good morning. Um, uh, probably eight plus years ago, my nieces and my daughter came to me and said, Aunt Carlene, could we get together, and read the Bible, and pray together? And I said, well, sure. So we kind of worked out the details, and they all, at the time, lived in Syracuse. And they have jobs, and they have families, and obligations. And I said, well, I, I checked with the pastor at Lincourt Wesley and I said, you know, could we come in to your church house and just have a time to just pray and and read the word? And he said, of course, we'll leave the door open a certain time, a certain day, and just remember to lock it when you come out. So we did, and we met there, and each week we would pray and read the word and share our lives. And it was wonderful, and it lasted about a year and a half, and you know how the world, <laughs> the thorns grow up, and it pulls, pulls each one away. Mm -hmm. and, and so it just, we shut it down for a time. And in September, Pastor had asked me, he said, Caroline, what, what do you feel about leaving a small group at home? I said, Pastor, I don't really think I'm emotionally ready. Because I, even now, I'm still an emotional basket case. But, you know, the Lord uses you. He, he knows when you're ready. He knows. So the following month in October, don't my nieces call me and say, Aunt Carly, we want to start up our Bible study again. Can we do that? And I said, yes, of course. So I said, well, I guess really, unless we start a construction company, we need to come to the place that has a wheelchair ramp. So that would be my house. And so since October, we have been meeting every other Friday. We read the word. We pray together. We worship the Lord in song. And we just enrich each other's lives through the time that we spend together. And um, I'm blessed to have uh, my niece, Betty Lou, who was already ordained. My we 
use Heather, who is an exceptional Bible scholar, to teach me. And yet they, they want to come together with me and share what I know as an old person. <laughs> <laughs> but we center it all on God, and it's just a good thing. And I learn every time we're together. Every time we're together, I learn. So if you can do it, I will do it. When God says do it, go, go, go. <laughs> Amen. 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 And that's that's part of being a disciple. It's part of being the church. At, at formally in our church, you know, of course, we have our, our Tuesday evening uh, Bible study. Uh, they're just finishing up Hebrews at this point. Finished. Finished. Oh. <laughs> We're going to start Luke. Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke. Just starting. Just starting. So. Sweet. Yeah, so, so hook up with Greg on, on Tuesday nights for the Gospel of Luke at 6.30. We have our women's uh, prayer and share on uh, Wednesday mornings as well. A bunch of ladies from various churches coming together to pray and to, to wash their minds in the Word. We're going to be having our uh, people in the Bible study coming up here um, in, a, in probably a few weeks, probably around Easter. And then I'm going to be leading a small group as well. But it doesn't have to be formalized. Like if you could just... In, as, a, as a more mature Christian or as someone who knows a little bit about something, you have that ability to share that with another individual. And so take that individual and say, you know what, let's meet for coffee once a week and just meet. Be prayer partners. Say, you know what, be accountability partners. Just, just invest that time and that energy. You're going to, this is, this is what I think when they say produce fruit, right? So, so producing fruit, we've got the next slide here. Oh, yeah, so that, I was going to say this, too. Oof. Oh. So um, in, our, in our sharing of our, of our seeds, of the sharing of the, the master's, the master sower seeds, sometimes there are people, to, even with your best effort, even with your best trying, that won't be able to receive that. And this is a meme I saw out there a while ago, and so I, I thought I'd share that. Because the attitude for growth and calling starts in you. And so it, it doesn't take the best teacher, the Bible scholar, the, 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 the it, it just takes a willing, growing heart in that call inside of you. And unfortunately, Judas didn't quite have that going on. So. But fruits, is that my, my next slides are fruits, yeah. So yielding fruit nourishes more than one person. And so if you were to take a stock of corn or a stock of wheat, and we're going to go all, all um, harvesty uh, uh, vegetable in our sowing analogy, that, that great kernels of wheat are sown again and can produce even more and more and more. And that's what we're doing as disciples, is that we're investing in the church, each other, um, the community, our neighbors, to invest in more than one person. Yes, we could eat eat that corn stock, but what more is it to share that meal with somebody else and have us feast together? Yielding fruit produces more fruit. Empathy and compassion. I just said that earlier, that, um, that I believe that part of this, and maybe it's just because I'm such a, I, I think through compa a compassionate, empathetic lens, that there are people who we need to understand can't quite get there and we have to have empathy and compassion for them rather than think by becoming some sort of military uh, uh, guess, just get out of those thorns, Jimmy. Okay, you know, like it's not, you know, we have to kind of figure out how to help them through those things. Uh, we are grown for a purpose and calling, and God puts us right where we need to be in that right time. He has planted you in this church, He has brought you here today for a reason. You're in your neighborhood, or your trailer, or your apartment, or your house. You have the family around you, or the people around you for a reason. Because God helps make those circles of influence for us. And then we are called to minister in those ways to those people. So start something. Just say, hey, you know what? I, I think I'd like to, like to have a, a prayer partner. Could you pray with me? And could we meet every week? If you don't actually make a date, guess what? It'll be this, oh, we'll do it. We'll do, do it. And then next year you'll hear me preach on the same thing. You'll be like, oh, missed it. You actually have to make the date. 
You have to put it on the calendar. And the rule uh, for all you bachelors out there is you always make the second date during the first date, okay? You never be like, oh, will, will she call me or will, will he call me? Oh, I'll wait by the phone for them. No, don't do that. Make the ne next date during the first date. Have it be a routine thing where, you, where it's like, okay, we expect that we're going to meet. And we expect that it's going to happen. We expect that we're going to do these kind of things instead of this calendar dance that some people do with things. And so that will help you out in that way. So. Or, again, for your neighbors and other people who might not want to go that deep that quick, we have some of these lighter things, such as our Easter dinners and our uh, Sunday Palm Sunday service and things like that, that people can come to and get this kind of message from, from the weird guy up here standing with the, with the prayer shawl. So, so that they, they can hear it directly in there. So a couple of verses to end out here. Iron sharp as iron. So one person sharpens another. Proverbs 27, 17. Are you getting stretched? Are you getting sharpened? Where is that coming from? And, and invest in that to help you do and take those steps. Or Titus. The older man, to be temperate and worthy, respect, self-controlled, and sound in the faith and love and endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in ways that they live, not to be slanderous or addicted to much wine, but teach what is good. They can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, to be busy at home, and to be kind. And so this older generation teaching a younger generation, this iron sharpening iron, this building in ourselves a community of Christians who are growing is important. And it's up to all of us to help that community come. Because I think that's what we want here at our church. We want God's community to be here worshiping with us each Sunday. So. Let's pray, and we'll end our service with a song. Lord God Almighty, I thank you for your teaching today. I thank you that we have hit some good soil here, um, that we are growing, that we are a church wanting to seek you first and wanting to grow with you, God. Give us the wisdom of how to coordinate that the best or the opportunities in our own individual lives so that we continue to be stretched and grown. Um, as disciples in Christ. And help us to rely on the master, the, the rabbi, the teacher, Jesus Christ, to guide us, to have, have the Holy Spirit guide us in these decisions. Lord, help us that don't have the time be able to have and set aside the time. Help us who have nothing going on and feel like, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a, you know, not the transportation or the, or the ability to do the things. Help clear those ways so that there is transportation and the ability to connect with others. And Lord, I just ask you to bless this congregation today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Please stand as we worship.
Lord God Almighty, I ask you to bless this congregation with the boldness to be able to share. Share their faith. Share Jesus Christ. Share an invitation. Bring someone to some events or some gathering to their homes, to a church, and that we would invest in our community, that we would recognize the desperate times that we are in, and that people need Jesus more than ever, and that we would be able to be your hands and feet in this community and in this place. So I ask you to bless them with that, Lord, and help us have the courage and zeal to follow through with your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. See you all next week.